Good afternoon and welcome to the Software Engineering Institute's webinar series. My name is Shane McGraw and I would like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Our webinar series presentation today is CMMI for Services, presented by speaker Eileen Forrester. Thank you very much, Shane. And thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm really pleased to be talking with you. And it seems especially appropriate to be talking with you today. Tomorrow is the one-year anniversary from the launch date of the model. So the model is just about one year old. Here's what I'll be talking about today. I will describe CMMI services and why we built it just a little. Um, I say just a little because we did some work before the webinar to find out who you are in the audience. And we have quite a mix. Um, we designed this webinar really for our experienced uh, users of CMMI for Services to give an update on what we're learning and how it's going so far and what's coming next. But we also have a fair number of people brand new to CMMI for Services. I hope those of you who are new got our earlier message and the pointer to our overview video because that really gives you uh, background. I won't do a full overview, in other words, in this webinar, but it's available on that video. Um, the second thing I'll cover is the fit of CMMI for services with ITIL, especially a little bit on ISO and RMM. RMM, for those of you who don't know, is another model being built by some colleagues at the SEI. That stands for Resiliency Management Model. I'll give you a little bit of information on what we're seeing from early users and some ideas for you if you're just considering uh, applying the model now. And many of you know that we have the next version of the model, version 1.3, coming out in November of this year. And I'll tell you what kind of changes you can expect to see in the services model. I'll tell you about current uh, training and appraisal products and status and tell you a little bit about planning and there's an opportunity there for you to give us some input. I listened closely to that input and have used it to make a lot of our decisions on what we do next with the product so I really encourage you to take advantage of those opportunities. And we know that quite a few of you wanted information on how to qualify to teach the new introduction to CMMI for Services course that we're launching just before SEPG North America. Um, I'll give uh, some introductory information about that. Full information is available on our website and I'll point you to that fuller information if I don't answer your questions today. And there are other opportunities to participate. So briefly, the CMMI for Services is another in our uh, series of CMMI models. It's one of three. And like all of the CMMI models, it's a process improvement model. So it's not a standard or a set of procedures. It's a collection of effective practices that can be used to guide improvement. The question I've been getting most often lately has been, did you intend this model to be used for those who have services inside their organization? or is it meant to be used with clients? And we really meant both, and we are seeing use in both ways. So if you're inside an organization, this can be applied to financial management, human resources, IT services, and so forth. And we built it because of the predominance of services throughout the global economy. Uh, about 80% of the worldwide economy is in service rather than manufacturing or tangible goods, anything of that sort. The number varies from region to region, country to country. So for example, in the US, it's 80% and growing. In Germany, for example, it's slightly smaller, but still 70% of their economy. We designed this because we wanted to cover a wide range of services of interest to our practitioners and others. Um, and I'll say more about that in a couple of minutes. Of course, there are some existing models for services, but those usually are focused on one service type and are often proprietary. And sometimes they don't have the kind of improvement path that we always include in a CMMI model. There's some recent data, a study that I just saw recently about uh, US companies only, and they noted that the cost of poor customer service, and by that they don't mean the entirety of the service delivery, just the customer support group is about $83 billion annually in the U.S. alone. So obviously if you make improvements, you have an opportunity for quite a savings there. 